Olympics as well? Did you enjoy the Olympics? Yeah. Oh, good. Because okay. it wasn't what we were expecting, was it? Because we're mostly British. We were expecting it to be shit. <laughs> Comedians have spent the last seven years going, it's going to be shit, isn't it? It's going to be shit. Let's make jokes about it being shit. Let's make jokes about a load of cockneys at the East End, nicking bits of athletics equipment and going, oh, yeah. And then suddenly it was the opening ceremony started and we all went, oh. <laughs> We're rather a clever nation, aren't we? Yeah. Look at what we've done. I mean, if you could just leave out all the history about invading people and making their countries, this is very well done. Yes, yes. Look at that. Here come all those countries. Don't mention the empire. Come on in. It was basically the Industrial Revolution and then the Beatles. We've done nothing in between. No. No, that's the way it's gone. Yes. Here comes Isambard Kingdom Brunel. He's invented technology. What happened next? Come together. I think that was the way it went. Yes, yes. Anything in between? No, no, for fuck's sake, don't mention Africa, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, it was fucking, oh, my, my, my favourite thing about the Olympics, I must say, I did like the fact that they made such a big fuss about no one taking any drugs at the Olympics, and you do think, right, okay, the athletes clearly aren't allowed to take drugs, but fuck me, you're telling me Danny Boyle didn't have a couple of spliffs on the go when he came up with that shit? <laughs> Seriously, what are we going to do? We're going to get like five Olympic rings made out of molten fire from his embarking into Brunel standing on a hill with some sheep. <laughs> uh, what's going to happen next? I don't know. Something moving around, then something else, and then we'll, we'll go, and then we'll get the Arctic yes, Monkeys. Uh, where did they come from? Fuck it. We're going to play a Beatles song, then I'll put it back. Really, what will happen next? I reckon some doves on bikes will take off. <laughs> Fucking hell, this is good shit. Do you want some? No thanks, I'm an athlete. I'll be running. That'll be different. <laughs>
Bond had six rounds of applause without telling a single joke. That was me every fucking time. Whereas this awkward silence, yeah? Yeah? Oh, that was you. That laugh, that was me. There we go. That's me again. There we go. That's me. Round of applause. That's me. There we go. That's me. Still me. Not even a joke. See how I've done this? Not even a joke. Not even a joke. Got a round of applause. And now... He's done. My fucking ass is he done. The only time he's done is if you touch his cock, it'll go off fucking quickly because you've got a lot of disappointment coming your way later on. <laughs> so you don't know what happened there. We went, we went, we went worse than silence. We went to a room full of you tedious, pointless waste of fucking sperm and egg. Oh, we oh, last about so around ten minutes. There we are. That's it. So, what's your history then? This isn't going to be. A, do you know what? This is spank. Yeah. So really, I don't give a fuck. I've done five shows today. I've done my solo show. I am delighted to be here making shit up on the hoop. So let's find out a little bit about it because really, I don't care if you want to be that rude to just piss off everyone else's night. That's fair enough. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. What's your name? Louise, okay, Louise. Oh, what, something you can't talk because you're too blue is the side of a prick? Well, I'm sorry, that's not quite how it works. So, well, Louise, what do you do, Louise? You're a nurse. Fuck it, that explains a couple of things all of a sudden, doesn't it? Well, you brought your fucking patient out to work. So, he's going to kick my cunt in. My God. Excellent. A nurse who can't even understand basic biology. Huh? Jesus, I've been threatened by Scottish people before, but someone going to kick my cunt in has really shown a real misunderstanding of the way the whole body fucking works. There we go. So, Louise Ross Patton, what's your name on the left-hand side of Ross? Can you remember? My name is uh, Whatever you want it to be. Jeez, Leslie. What's your name? Your name's Leslie. Leslie and Louise. And what, how come you are uh, out here this evening with, with this dickhead? I don't know. That's your best friend? Of your very good friends. Wow, you've got appalling tastes. You? <laughs> hey, oh, you, still, you still have hair, and I'm cool. Yeah, 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 and I'm going bald. And what kind of insult is that? Yeah, yeah. 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 and. Hi, I'm a funny. to Edinburgh to get reviewed to find out they're unpopular in Scotland. You just do it by fucking breathing. Fuck <laughs> mm. Oh, dear me, I don't know. Any, any questions? I'm not going to do a set. I might as well just carry on to the next interruption from Dickface over there. So, no, so what have we got over here? The G is quite fucking young as well, isn't it? Now we're chatting away. Is it? Over here, we're over here. Can we tell you, do you know what? I would try very hard. Have you ever tried doing stand up and you've got someone a metre away from you who won't shut up the whole fucking time? I do feel sorry for you though because you have quite rightly picked the worst seat in the house by a fucking country mile. You are just sat behind the world's biggest fucking dickhead. So that is that is going to be difficult. Oh, and now the nurses are going to defend you. There we go. Oh. What's that? Do you want me to slap? Do we want you to slap Ross? Coffee, yes. Yeah. Really fucking hard, yeah, no, slap him, really, no. most intelligent person I've had to deal with, so it wasn't tricky. He, but he pissed off the entire room, clearly. But I was told beforehand that he was too much and to ignore him, but 
I mean, I think that's a really fun late night show where you get to fuck about. Um, secondly, if you go into material, you know, we've all got material. There's only so much you can improv around it. And so some of the material is going great, but it, it, it not only puts you off as a comic, puts off everyone around him. A, everyone hates him. B, uh, he's drunk. C, actually, in that case, there was a very special demographic because he was with two women. I don't know how he'd managed to pull that one off. Do you think they were hired? Do you I, think they were hired? Um, I don't actually think they were hired. Uh, well, Do you think they were embarrassed? I think so, but I think they were a bit drunk as well. The thing is, with a show, it's a matter of taste. With a heckler, we've all got stock put downs and stuff like that, but with someone like that, you give them enough rope to hang themselves. And he kept on going and kept on going. I got about eight rounds of applause in a row. Now, he, something had to happen to make him stop. And to be honest, when that girl went, do you want me to slap him? I thought, well, that's going to be a nice get out. I didn't know. I didn't know that they were going to leave. But when actually, because she slapped him and he stood up and he kind of, well, he went like that. And I thought, oh, this could get, because if that had happened, I would have gone in. Um, if you, because you had some amazing put downs then. One about your mum winning because she's 70 old. That was brilliant. Are those pre-prepared or? Um, well, to be honest, the the one about the mum is actually, it, I'm not the only one who's ever done it because it's just simple logic. Yeah. Because, you know, he's, he wasn't a bad looking kid. He's probably in his early 20s and my mum genuinely is 75. And I mean, I've... The one about I would call you a cunt, but you have neither the depth nor the capacity to please. I love that. I heart on that. That is actually, to be fair, um, Clemenceau said it about Lloyd George. I was the first person to use it on the comedy circuit. Jimmy Carr then found out about it and used Jimmy it. Carr finds out about things. He doesn't steal things. He, he, he finds out about them. And he used it and he wrote material around it. So it's now kind of seen as Jimmy's, which is why I put the bit on the end about if you think that's Jimmy's, find out where he got it from. This is the thing about put downs, is there were a couple that you could say were a bit stock, but the best advice I ever got, it's a little bit dull, but from a guy called Rick Overton, who's in Groundhog Day, brilliant comic, he's uh, described hecklers as like, um, it was a Star Trek reference, so sorry. I'm already happy about this. But it's like the Romulan uh, cloaking device, you can only see when it fires. And that's what a heckler's doing, is he's, he's giving you something of himself. And he was basically proving that he was a drunken, boorish idiot, so I just had to give him enough rope to uh, hang himself, and I think, I think he did.